Hiya, today we're going to jump right on into it. So the first thing we need to grab is some photos. So I'm going to go to my uploads. I'm going to use some pre-made slides that I've done. Um, I downloaded them and re-uploaded them back into Canva. So I'm just going to grab four of these slides right here because I'm going to use four. I'm going to grab every all the ones that I want to use. If you're going to use photos, you can just grab those. I would grab them all at one time so you don't have to go back and forth. So I'm going to go to my apps and I am going to find this SKU image app. So I'm going to go into the SKU image app. I'm going to grab my first one that's highlighted, which is this eyeliner one. I have it set at zero and 24. That's the angles I want. You can do different angles if you want to, but that's the angle I like for this. So I'm going to add that to the design. I'm going to take the photo that I just made that out of and I'm going to go ahead and delete it because I already got my angled one for it. I want to move it over a little bit. Do my next one. Keep your numbers the same so they'll all be the same. So I take my next one. Now, if your photos are all different sizes, try to try to make sure your all your photos are the same size. So if you have to go in there and go in and make a document or design or something and add your photo to a page and download them to make sure when you upload them back, they're all the same size PNG. I would do that like these are all the same as it would have been in a presentation. If you get what I'm saying. So if you do like a Facebook post size and that's the size you're going to use, use all of those. Just go and make PNGs out of the whatever ones you want to use and then do it that way. That way you make sure everything coming back in is the same size. And let's do eyebrows, add to design. And then I can delete that one. Did I do the first? Oh, I did two eyeshadows because I was blabbing y'all. Eyeshadows, eyebrows, and let's get this one. So now that I got that, I'll delete the big one. And now that I have all of them, I am going to use the old editor while we still have it. So I'm going to go out and edit image. I am in the old editor. So I'm going to go to put it in the new editor real quick. So if you want to use the old editor for this, I prefer the old editor, this blue box down here. Take me to the old editor. So what I know now I'm going to do now that I'm in the old editor, I'm going to go into shadows. I want to put a drop on each one of these. So I'm just going to grab drop. And there's a reason why, and I'm going to show you in a few why I'm using it. You can use the new editor for this. It's not going to hurt it any. So, and now that I've got those, I'm going to line my photos up. Let's grab them. Reduce them a little bit. So you can just highlight and reduce them all. Now what I want to do is I am going to go back into my apps and I am going to go find this easy reflection app. I'm going to grab my first one. Radio reflection. I like to take the offset and make it up and turn the opacity down. That's personal preference for me. I'm going to add it to the design. And then what I'm going to do now is I am going to turn them like so, line them up. Sometimes they're not the same size as the photo, so you got to be be on that a little bit and then I'm going to do all of them when you hit go back when you go to the next one create a reflection and my off uh, offset and opacity stay the same so I don't have to worry about that anymore it's one good thing about some of these apps that they keep those so that makes it awesome sauce there and then I'm just going to line it up I'm going to turn it line it and then line it up and put a, just a hair bit underneath over top of that picture. I'm going to move these all to the back, but I'm just going to do it all at one time. So I'm going to grab this one, say go back, create the reflection, add the design. I'm going to spin it. Try to line it up that way. Go in here, reduce it down a little bit. I wish I could grab that corner without moving the page, but you know, hey, hey girl, hey. And Let's see, just a little bit shorter on that side. What's that one? Does that one look good? That one needs a little bit more shortening. And then I'm going to grab this one, hit go back, 
add reflection, grab that, go over here, do a little spinny spin, try to get the angles right on it and the corners on it. Some of these are hard because the way I have the gradient on these, it kind of, it's hard to see the edge. So I'm going to use this line right here to try to determine my edge in the corner in there here. Let me pull that out just a smidge. Now that I've got all my shadows in there, I'm going to go into position. I am going to highlight this one. I'm going to hit my shift key, highlight this one, and then I'm going to move all of them to the back. This one I think I can pull out just a smidge. All right, so now that they're all in the back, now you have your reflection and your little doodad here. The extra little thing I needed for this that I did. Now, if you're just going to do black on the background, which really makes it look sleek, I think. Like that, and it just like, looks like a really cool reflection coming off. If you want to do a different color back there, we'll go back to the white. The other thing I did, why I wanted the old editor is I went in here and you can do multiple shadows in the old editor. That's why I like the old editor. You don't have to, you can't only just do one, you can do multiples. So I wanted to put the backdrop on that and then I went and kind of turned the transparency down on that and blurred it up a little bit and just gave that little bit of edge on the back side of those. But that's a personal preference that I did. And then when you do those, just make sure that your slides are lined up in position. So you don't want you don't want that one on top. You want that one in the back. So you have to line them up accordingly, or your shadow will go over top the next one. So we can just go in there and we'll just do a I won't do the the adjustments to it. We'll just leave it as it is, apply. Go in here and put a drop shadow in the back and put a drop shadow in the back. So I didn't soften these up though, but that's what you can also do for those. We'll see how that's, this should be, on, eyeshadow should be on top. Let's go. Eyeshadow needs to be on top. See, because if you, they're out of order, see how the shadow's going over top on that one? So we just have to make sure those are in the correct order. So that shadow is behind that card. And that's the way you can do that one. And that's just a personal preference that I kind of like doing that. And I see how it's kind of harsh and I softened it up on that one just to make it look a little bit better. And that's why I use the old editor, but you really don't have to. Um, you can group them. Change them around, put them on there a little bit. But I really think I like it on the black background. It really kind of makes it like a sleek little, these are kind of glowy with that reflection right there. But that's how easy that is to do. Once you get it down pat, um, I think the hardest thing for me is finding the angle of how I want this. Because still, SKU's, the SKU app is still new. So it's kind of, still kind of in trial phase with me so and you can get really like crazy with it so and then if you don't remember the numbers you left it at ooh, baby you gonna have some trouble trying to figure out what you did before because i did for this and i didn't know what number it was because i tried something else with a skew and i lost my numbers and it was like i can't get that angle back so i would have a little cheat sheet somewhere if you find an angle you really like to use and keep those numbers down for you if you ever need to come back and skew something and you want that at a certain angle. Just a tip from me to you. And that's how you do that, y'all. I love you guys. I will see you on the next one and make beautiful things. Bye, y'all.